So you have a short form content agency or you want to start a short form content agency, yet you see all these people online saying, don't start it, it's too late, saturated, profit margins are way too low, but what's the truth? I got a very professional voiceover artist to do that last part. I definitely did not just ask someone if they were Japanese and then ask them to do the voiceover to help me with the video. Definitely did not do that. Freelance to fortune. Do you think you say it like that, but in Japanese? Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, we are in beautiful Japantown today. The sun is coming out, you know what I'm saying? Kind of cloudy outside, but it's okay. I thought, you know what, what better place than Japantown to talk about short form content because both Japantown and short form content, uh, they both have no correlation actually. But anyways, let's get right into the video. So here's what we're gonna be talking about. How are you gonna increase your profit margins for your short form content agency? Because I still believe that short form content agency is a great kind of beginner or intro service to offer as a new SMMA or as a new freelancer. And then we can kind of use it as a stepping stone to get to the higher ticket services uh, once you have more experience in some case studies. For the record guys, if I had to start an SMMA all over again, I would definitely start with a short form content agency just because the barrier to entry is so low. And I know that kind of makes people think like it's not a, like because the barrier of entry is so low, you shouldn't start it. But as a complete newbie, I'm going to explain exactly why I would still do it and how I would make it even more profitable and the stepping stone thing like I just explained. Another thing I want to address, a lot of people are saying that short from content agencies, they're just way too saturated, right? Well, here's the thing, almost any service that you want to offer is going to get saturated or is already saturated. Especially, I guess, when you want to consider AI, a lot of people say, oh, it's getting too easy. Everyone's like putting the price down and they're just competing on price, blah, blah, blah. There's two reasons why I don't think that really matters. Number one, every day someone's starting a business and they need short form content because they understand how powerful social media is. And number two, people who are offering short form content as a service are either quitting or they're moving on to a different service once they have more experience. Like I said, a lot of people, they don't just grow a short form content agency. What they'll do is use it as a stepping stone business or service until they can get to a higher ticket, more higher ticket service. That's exactly what I'm doing. Soon I won't even be offering short form content as a service because I already did my part. I paid my dues, I built my portfolio, built the team. Now we can kind of move on to something that's similar to what we were doing before, except instead of just purely offering video editing and short form content, we're offering a more higher ticket service, more, uh, you can say, quote unquote, important service for the customers, for our clients. So that way we can get paid a lot more, but also we help our customers make a lot more money too. So we have an inflow of new businesses who need this service and we have an outflow of service providers who are no longer offering this service. That's where you come in, you know what I'm saying? That's why I believe that it doesn't matter how saturated this is, you can still get in there and it's a really good opportunity to still start your agency. But you might bring the question up like, okay, why are these people giving up and quitting their short form content agency, okay? Well, it's not because there's not enough customers, I'll tell you that. So I actually wrote a list of common risks that business owners can kind of get themselves into, beginner agency owners that I've witnessed just from being in the space for so long and that I've made myself. So number one is growing your team and payroll expenses way faster than growing your revenue. A lot of people can get excited. They can be like, oh man, my offer works. So let me just spend literally all of my money on hiring as many people as I can. That way I can get just more and more clients. And it's not really the smartest way to do things. If you're just starting out, you should really just focus on like, small increments of recruiting and then small increments of getting clients small increments of recruiting training solidifying the quality control then get more clients it's kind of like you got to do that have that balance another thing is having an equity partner in the business that has the exact same strengths and weaknesses as yourself for example if you're really good at sales and you just hire someone else that's also good at sales and let's say you guys are both bad at the service delivery aspect of things that doesn't make any sense what would make more sense is if you're really good at sales and the marketing and you have an equity partner that's really good at this client service delivery then the partnership makes sense and you guys can both be making a lot of money and it makes sense to partner up that way and the last one a big mistake that i made a lot when i was first starting out is failing to train your team and keeping them accountable for client deadlines okay so this happened to myself when i was first starting smma because i really fell for the whole um oh you can just hire some is that annoying
making beeping noise. So that's one thing that I fell for, you know, the whole thing where people say, oh, you can just simply hire someone overseas and they'll take care of all of your clients for you. You don't have to worry about anything. Just do sales calls and all that and your team will take care of the rest, right? Way simpler than it sounds. And it, it sounds easy and sounds really simple and easy to do on paper, right? But in actuality, it's a lot more difficult until you can eventually create the systems and you have the revenue to actually hire someone else to kind of help you train these people or you have the SOPs or you have a team member that's really reliable so they can help train people and quality control everybody. But until then, yeah, that's it's something you gotta do is quality control by yourself. So if you have the proper expectations while you're getting it to SMMA, this is gonna help you a lot during the journey because it's truly a journey just you know figuring this out as a complete newbie, complete beginner with no previous experience. And look, worst comes to worst, you're like, oh man, I can't do this freelancing or SMMA thing anymore. It's too difficult. There's too many little tasks and blah, blah, blah. It's just too much for me to handle. Here's the great thing. When you're getting into SMMA, you're forced to learn all of these little skills, right? So management, uh, the actual service delivery part, sales, all that kind of stuff. What you can do is you leverage all of these skills that you've been stacking this whole time and you can get a decently high paying job, if not like a really high paying job, depending on how good you are, of course, uh, doing a skill that you learned while pursuing SMMA. Not only that, but you also have the perspective of a business owner. So when you're applying to these jobs, you actually understand like, all right, how do I directly help this business like what is my role and i think that helps a lot because some people they'll you know be applying to jobs but they won't even understand it from the perspective of the business owner which is yo you need to somehow make the business more efficient or you need to make the business more money right that's what like every person's job is in the company so that's something that's super helpful too that's why i feel like if this thing like fails everything crumbles I can always get a job temporarily until I figure out my next kind of hustle or my next business. All right, so now is short form content agency still worth it considering there are all these video editing AI softwares that are coming out and they're just making the tasks like super easy, right? I would say yes and no. It's not like, like everything in life, it's not so black and white, okay? So the thing is with AI, yes, it's gonna make the job easier, but you still need someone to actually work the AI program, right? So you still need someone to take the video, plug it into the program, input whatever you want, make sure it gets out. Like I said, maybe make a few tweaks here and there, um, export it, publish it to your client's social media channels, or maybe just send it to the client if you're not actually doing the publishing. Either way, you need someone to operate the program is my point. So that's why I'm not too worried about AI. By the time that AI is 100% efficient and 100% accurate, which means the client, let's say, you know, eventually AI might get to the point where as the client's filming, it directly uploads to the AI program. And then it, as like it's getting uploaded, it's getting edited, it's perfectly edited, perfectly cut up, no changes needed. And as soon as the AI program's done editing, it goes and publishes it for the client with the caption and all that. Look, by the time we get to that point, man, there's gonna be plenty of other opportunities in SMMA. Uh, still, there's probably gonna be content opportunities as well, but there's gonna be more things to worry about and other opportunities to pursue by then. What do you think that is? See, it, look at it. We found a package of pills, those glass on the ground shattered. This is what we gotta worry about in San Francisco and in the Bay Area. There's a Raising Cane's over here. I went there and I would say 25 or 30 percent of the parking lot was just covered in glass and they actually had to shut down their pickup orders and people dining in because there's that many robberies like smash and grab robberies here so yeah if you come out here don't go back okay so for the next decade or so or maybe five to ten years who knows how long we have until ai gets to that point where it's like 100 percent efficient right but until we get to that point if you're thinking of starting a social media uh short form content agency or video editing agency just do it before i get into how i increase my profit margins so that i'm not just a short form content agency and not just competing with everyone on prices let's go get some snacks some japanese snacks out here you know what i'm saying and uh let's go search around see what we can find the hall first things first though i do not condone eating junk food ladies and gentlemen eat healthy foods all right chicken breast lean beef broccoli okay those things are good for you, cabbage, string beans. If you're cutting, right, if you're trying to get lean, let me tell you something real quick. One chicken breast, right, average chicken breast is roughly 200 calories, okay? It's got a lot of protein in it too. Whereas one serving of these chips is 300 calories. So you could easily crush one of these, you know what I'm saying? Like a chicken breast is way more filling and way more nutritious. I'm not a dietitian or anything, but I'm just saying guys, if this is not something you should be eating every single day. We got cheese Dorito. These just look like Doritos on steroids, man. 
That is super cheesy. It's a flavor blast. Pretty good, off to a good start. I feel like all of these are gonna be good though. It's just figuring out which one's the best. Salt Dorito? I don't even know. I think it's literally just salt. It's literally a tortilla chip. L, I took a massive L on this one. I was thinking it'd be like a salt, but then maybe they had some like hidden flavors in it, you know? But no hidden flavors, man, just straight up salt. Strong potato chips. It's supposed to be super hot chili. We're strong. They look like barbecue. Honestly, it kind of tastes like barbecue chips too. I wouldn't say super hot. I would say half the chili. They're pretty good though. Honestly, it tastes like barbecue. Let me take a little drink break, you know what I'm saying? Blueberry drink, got my blueberry drink. Ugh. Yo, that is sour. <laughs> I was not expecting it to be sour. It tastes like candy. I think I prefer water over that. Brown sugar bread. Let's see what this bad boy's about. Oh yeah, there's no filling. I was thinking there was gonna be a filling. It's just sweet bread. They're pretty fluffy though. Chocolate bread. This one has a filling in it. Chocolate filling. Oh snap. I'm not a big fan of chocolate. So I don't know. If you like chocolate, that's probably pretty fire, but it's exactly what it says it is. It's chocolate filled bread. The bread is pretty good though. I, I'm not, <laughs> this is liquid candy. Liquid rage. Try some liquid rage real quick. I feel like Nika caught avocado. <laughs> Just eating all this shit. That's good. This is like a more tame version of this. That's number one so far. We also got this thing, whatever this is. It's like chocolate bread. It's all right. Oh my God, that's sour. It's chocolate, chocolate bread. It's kind of weird, honestly. <laughs> that's not what I expected. We have the real chocolate bread in this one. I say it's weird. We have Sapporo Reserve beer. It just tastes like this, it's beer. I'm not drinking No? You should have told me that earlier. I told you I'm not going to drink. You didn't tell me that? I didn't. I can't drink it. I could. I would have got the smaller one. I'm going to just rank the top three, okay? Because that's way too much work to rank everything. And none of these bread stuff were really that impressive, if I'm being honest. Definitely number one right here. Number two right here. And number three, I guess. There you go. Top three. If you're ever in Japantown, get those. I don't know about the rest of this, though. Last sip, last sip. Ah, so foamy. Last but not least, lads, let's say that you're starting a short from content agency or video editing agency and clients keep asking for cheaper and cheaper videos because they understand that it's video editing is almost becoming commoditized because of all these AI programs, all these softwares, right? So you're worried that how am I going to be profitable as a business if everyone just keeps fighting on price? Well, first of all, if you're getting really, really cheap clients consistently, Probably your portfolio isn't good or maybe your sales process isn't good. There are people who will pay a premium price for really solid quality work, okay? Business is all about relationships. Like a lot of it is about having a good relationship with someone who's a quality either client or a quality service provider, right? Like for example, if I have an editor on my team that's a beast, then I need to make sure I have a really good relationship with them because if you have a good relationship, that kind of like that trust of having a relationship trumps price. Like I'm willing to pay slightly above whatever everyone else is paying if it means that I can keep this person on my team because I know they're reliable. Another thing you want to take in consideration is like I kind of said earlier, short from constant agency, I've always viewed it as a stepping stone service. OK, so you get in there, you get good case studies, you learn social media, you learn uh, as much as you can about content psychology what it takes to grow on social media, what it takes to get views on social media, and you try and hone in on a specific niche. It could be any niche that you want, okay? For example, let's say you're helping fitness trainers. You do short from content for fitness trainers, and now what you wanna do is you wanna learn as much as you can about that niche and how they are using content in social media to get more clients, okay? Now you wanna step in there, and like I said, you wanna get in there with short from content as like your beginner service, I guess you can say. One way that I was able to do this was instead of just strictly sticking to short from content, which is one thing that I did in the beginning. In the beginning, I was strictly doing short form content. As I kind of built up my portfolio, what I did was I branched out to similar types of things. So I started doing not only short form content, but also long form content and just video editing. What I actually branded myself as was uh, an organic content marketer and organic content marketing, organic content managing, strategist, whatever you want to say, okay? So basically, I would help clients with their pretty much overall uh, social media strategy, so their organic strategy. I help them with their long form editing as well, which you can make a lot more money with long form editing than short form editing, just because of how complex it can be. Uh, help them with like video ideas. And this may seem like, okay, why are you offering all these services? But in my opinion, 
you're not offering multiple services. You're offering like one service, which is being like their social media partner. Okay, so now you're not just a social media short form content editor that they can just easily replace with someone else. Now you are a whole entire branch, like you're, you're the social media branch and division of their company. That's gonna be a lot harder to replace. So it makes your service a lot stickier and clients will stay with you a lot longer. At least that's been like our scenario. For example, all of our clients that we just did short from content for, they would be very, very sporadic with the amount of work that they gave us. It'd be like, there's a wave of work and then they kind of slow down and maybe they had another wave of work and then they slowed down. And then that's when I was like, ah, all right, hey guys, I already found, you know, I've got these other clients that are way higher ticket because they want us for their entire social media strategy. Uh oh. Something's happening. Luckily, like, you know, I, I saw that there were like these waves. And like I said, I already went into the short from content agency, already understand that this is a stepping stone kind of business. So when I got these other clients that needed us for like long form editing, social media management, all that kind of stuff, I was able to tell the short form editing clients, like purely short form editing, that's when I was able to fire them or let go of them and be like, hey, sorry guys, I'm no longer offering this just as a service. Uh, I still do offer it as a service, but it's more like an add-on along with everything else. And that, like I said, makes you a lot stickier. Now, instead of only getting paid like 500 to to $1,000 or maybe even like $1,500 per client, we're able to make, I would say, average 2.5 to 4K a month per client. Um, it's a little bit more complex, but at the end of the day, it's really not all that complex because we're just helping them with their social media. It, it, it all falls into one roof in my opinion. Okay, now you might be wondering, well, how do I learn all this stuff, right? How do I learn how to actually become a social media strategist and social media growth partner if you wanna call it, right? Well, there are tons of free YouTube videos. So if you have a client that's on Twitter and they're just going ham on Twitter or TikTok, you can go ahead and start researching a lot of free resources on YouTube, how to grow on TikTok, TikTok algorithm explained, TikTok strategies, blah, 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 trending TikTok content ideas. Look up all that kind of stuff on YouTube for free. And if you're worried about all this being outdated because a lot of these strategies can be outdated, but that's why you gotta join Agency Go, baby. Agency Go Discord is a free Discord. DM me on Instagram if you want access. I have a free course there, zero to 10K, everything you need to know for SMMA or freelance to get from zero to 10k free course free community dm me on instagram i'm not going to try and sell you anything in the dms i'm not going to be like hey thanks for dming me uh booking this call so i can try and sell you a product no i'm not going to do that okay guys literally just want a bunch of people to join the community that way we can have a community of like-minded people that are just hustlers and really trying to get this money and are sick of gurus that are like you know just bsing their way to sell courses man now here's another little tip and here's the last two tips that i have for you guys okay one thing is to experiment with hourly pay this goes against 99% of what people preach online, okay? Everyone says, don't do hourly pay because now you're limiting yourself for however many hours you have, blah, blah, blah. You can't outsource it, da, 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 da. Those are all lies, okay? In my experience, every single client that we have, I would say like 90% of the clients that have been hourly rate clients have been way easier to work with and they provide a lot more work because like I said, now they don't just view us as some editor that they just send a video, flat rate edit, get the video back. Instead, they're like, all right, invoice us for however many hours you guys spent last week, right? So we're able to do that and they know that there's a lot of hours that are being spent. Now, one thing you have to do is obviously be transparent and ask them, okay, what is your limit for each hour? What is your monthly rate that like your, your maximum allowed to uh, spend, right? What is in your budget? You wanna understand this and you wanna be truthful to them, be like, hey, I don't think this is gonna fit your needs. There's no way we can edit this many videos, give you scripts, do that, da da da, all this kind of stuff. And then basically they just, in my experience, they have just a way more flexible budget, higher budget, and they kind of respect you more. So they treat you better too, rather than someone who's like, oh, I can just replace this guy for another flat rate, pe uh, flat rate editor. Even the flat rate clients that were like high ticket flat rate video editing clients, even those guys are just, I don't want to talk bad, but it, they're just, you know, the hourly clients have just been a lot easier to work with, a lot more consistent. Um, and yeah, those have really been able, those types of clients have really been the reason why I've been able to kind of build the agency and scale it at 10K a month. So some of you may be thinking like, okay, I don't want to do hourly rate because then I'm only, you know, trading my, my time for money, which I don't want to do. It's not scalable. I can't, it's going to be difficult to outsource the work, blah, blah, blah. And look, those are all kind of valid points, but if you're a complete beginner and you're a newbie and you're a brokey, okay, you, you got to do what you got to do, all right? If I followed everyone's advice of just doing flat rate stuff, I would have definitely not been at 10K a month right now because I, and it, at least I probably would be at 10K a month, but definitely not profitable because flat rate projects are really tough because when you start, when you, 
when you're working with flat rate clients, they always ask for, most of them always ask for a lot more work than what they're paying for. And not only that, but you just gotta keep experimenting. Maybe flat rate would work for you, okay? Okay, so for full transparency, I'm saying try hourly rate until you get a 10K a month, okay? What I'm doing right now is now that we're at 10K a month, we're gonna be experimenting with a higher ticket offer that's going to be flat rate plus commission. And that way we can go a lot higher ticket that way because we have like a piece of the pie since we're actually gonna be helping clients make more money. Anyways, you do you. I'm just saying what's worked for me. Like I said, join Agency Go Free Discord, DM me on Instagram for access, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.